Good morning and welcome back to Mobile App Academy for 2023, everyone. This is our live building series where we show you how to build and configure mobile apps on the Now platform. My name is David Ha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow, and I'll be your hostess for today's session. Um, happy New Year's to everyone in Molec App Academy, uh, to you as well, Paul Padrab. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, um, welcome to the session. Our product experts are here to provide guidance, best practices, and answer any questions that do come up along the way. And we do host these academies every two weeks at 10 a.m. Pacific, in which our recordings are posted to YouTube on the ServiceNow now community channel. Uh, just want to start off by saying, you know, it's great to be back and I'm super excited to kick off another year. Um, that's going to be loaded with a lot, lots of new content and topics that that'll be upcoming in these um, next few months. But uh, in case you aren't familiar, uh, I also I want to point out a few resources that we have available. If you are new to mobile, um, we recommend that you check out some of our self enablement resources that you can find on our community site such as our essential trainings blog, mobile FAQs. It's also other, a plethora of other resources such as labs, mobile trainings that you can find on Now Learning, as well as our playlist to all of our previous app academies where you can find sessions like uh, mobile agent quick start guides, getting started with Now Mobile, as well as 30, uh, over 30 other sessions. Um, but with that said, let's kick off today's topic. Um, we are going to be revisiting some topics for the new year that are overdue for an update. Uh, today, I'll take you through on how you can get started with the mobile app builder with some of those latest updates. This is the first part in which I'll show you how you can leverage um, starter templates to quickly build a list and record screen, and then you can quickly fill out the fields that you need. And then in the next session, we'll go through how you can build new templates from scratch using the mobile card builder. Okay. Um, just to quickly review today's schedule, uh, we'll start off with, with a quick overview on mobile app builder, and then we'll jump into the exercises and wrap up with any Q&A, uh, if you have any. But just to provide some context before we jump into our exercises, um, if you're not already aware, mobile app builder is our configuration tool that we use to build and manage screens and records that make up your workflows within the service down mobile apps. With Mobile App Builder, you know, you can select an application scope that you want to work in and then select the record that you want to create or edit in which you will populate record fields and create relationships between different records. So whether you want to build a screen, a function, a UI rule or something else, all of this can be done inside of Mobile App Builder. And we've actually streamlined all of the mobile configurations into this tool. So you can perform all of your mobile related configurations all on a single interface. You don't have to navigate between different tools. Um, and it's also doing things like auto-populating auto fields uh, when you create relationships between records. So there's less fields to fill out and less navigation that needs to be done. Uh, and over time, this tool will get much better as well, right? As we continue to improve the app builder with all these different versions. Um, and then also, we do also guide users to appropriate record relationships and present invalid configuration choices. So this is greatly improved since our last tool, right? Um, uh, if you're familiar, Mobile Studio used to be our legacy developer tool in which we are planning on deprecating very uh, sometime in the future. Um, at this point, Mobile App Builder is a lot better in which it should be the primary tool, if not the only tool that you use to do any of your mobile app configurations. Um, if you happen to still use Studio, um, you'll actually run into a lot of issues. Um, Studio doesn't take you to the correct configurations. It uses a lot of the legacy um, JSONs and formats in which it will just create a, a very confusing experience for you to, to configure um, some of your mobile experiences. So highly recommend that you use Mobile App Builder moving forward. And all of our training on App Academy will also focus on the App Builder as well. Okay. Um, and there's really no better way to visualize all this than just, just for me to go through a quick example. Um, to get started, uh, I'm going to go through a simple example in which we leverage the out-of-the-box field service mobile app on our ServiceNow agent client. And using this field service mobile workflow, um, I'm going to create a new list screen that shows me my critical task or all of my work order tasks that are P1 and P2 that's assigned to my logged in agent. 
Uh, and we're going to do this by using one of our starter templates that you can find on Mobile Card Builder. If you're not aware, Mobile Card Builder, when you um, use it for the first time, it gives you like 12 templates that you can pull from. Um, and I'll show you how you can find that and navigate there as well. Um, but with all that said, let's go ahead and just jump into our instance and get started with this exercise. Uh, well, so let me share a new screen here. Go to a different desktop here and share screen. Okay. So let's get out of music. Okay. So here you should be able to see my instance on the right and then my mobile app on the left. Um, you can see here that I'm logged into the ServiceNow Asian client. Um, and since I am revisiting a, a, an, a, a mobile app builder, uh, let's actually show you um, on my instance what plugin you need in order to use the app builder. Um, if you go to my plugins list, you'll notice that I have the most updated mobile app builder. Um, we always recommend that with every update that you try to uptake these app builder updates because there's always new improvements that will just make your configuration experience much easier as an admin or developer. Uh, and if you look up mobile app builder, you'll see that I already have this installed in which I have the latest version 21.3. Okay. So once you have this plugin installed, um, it will also install mobile card builder for you as well as any other dependent plugin. And it should give you everything that you need when it comes to configuring mobile, right? And so to get started, all we do is look up mobile app builder and launch this tool. Um, and once we have this popped up, something that you might not see here, but you'll see as a new um, builder, uh, as a new user using the builder, uh, you'll actually see a, a new onboarding module pop up and that will take new users to learn through the basics of the new tool. Um, and you also have things like uh, these question marks that you'll find on every screen. If you tap on it, um, it'll give you the option to point to you know, product docs to, uh, for that specific configuration. It'll give you preview instructions, how to get started, uh, all these basic informational um, uh, content that you'll find useful. Uh, and I, I believe this question mark is also dynamic. So uh, depending on what screen you have pulled up, it should point you to the product docs for that screen uh, or that configuration, okay? But with that being said, um, to get started, we're gonna look up the field service mobile scope. We're gonna wanna use the out of the box app for field service. So let's launch into the scope. Um, and it's going to take me to this screen, which is a menu of all the different app configs, screens, cards, and icons, and related mobile records that are available in this out-of-the-box app, right? Um, since I opened up the field service mobile app, these are all the mobile records that were built inside of this scope. Um, and if there was a specific config configuration that you had in mind, then you can jump directly to that record, whether it be a screen, a function, or something else. Uh, but for today's exercise, we're just going to create a new screen, right? I have the screen popped up, so let's create a new one here. And we're just going to create a very basic list. Okay. Um, and then since we want to create critical instance, let's go ahead and name it that. Uh, or a critical task assigned to me. Um, and then it's going to ask for an icon. I'll use one of these out of the box icons. Um, this, the ones that you see available are all of the plugins that you have installed. So you can see I have apps like ITSM Mobile Agent, uh, Field Service. They already have all these icons available for me. So I'll just pick one of these. Um, and it'll show up as one of these up here, right? If I associate it as an icon um, uh, screen. If I make it a uh, record screen, then it'll sh the icon won't matter, uh, but if I associate here, then your icon will display. So for this, let's look up um, maybe, uh, I think there's a flag icon here, sorry. We'll just pick flag. Um, and then we'll save. 
And to continue building this list screen, um, every list screen needs a screen segment. So we'll create a new screen segment here. And then we'll uh, highly recommend always using unique naming. When you create any new records inside of Mobile App Builder, it'll just make it a much easier to find later. Um, so let's call this um, vertical task assigned to me. And then we'll just keep copying and pasting this for every one of these new records. And then we'll save. Um, and then we need to create a new stream. A stream just contains your data item, which defines um, what your data will display inside of your list screen, right? So we'll give this um, critical task assigned to me stream, and then we'll create that data item here. Um, and this data item is gonna pull from the work order task table. And the condition will be, um, where priority is one of uh, P1 or P2 for a critical instance or a critical task. One or two. And then we'll do an end clause and also make sure that these tasks are being assigned to my logged in user. So we'll make assigned to is dynamic to me. Okay, and then we'll save. Um, once you have your data item completed, um, you can go back to your list stream. And then uh, once you define your data, you now have to visualize it, right? So that's where this list item config comes in. So we'll create a new item config. These item configs just contains your card templates and cards, right? Um, so let's name this critical task. It's going to ask you what data um, you want to pull from when visualizing your cards. And I want it to pull from work order task. Uh, and then it's going to ask for the card itself. So let's go ahead and create a new card. We'll name it that. And then it's going to ask for a card template. Okay. So here's what I want to show you to help save some time. So for every list screen that you create, you might not always want to create a new template because it might take some time. Uh, maybe you just want to use one of our default templates that we already have available. How do I go about doing that, right? Um, when you used to use the old mobile studio um, builder, it used to give you a bunch of pre-built templates that you can just pick from. The same concept is applied here. It's just a different uh, visual. Um, First, I'm going to go back to my instance and I'm going to look up mobile card builder and launch that open on a new, new tab. On this left hand nav, you're going to see this little tab that says starter templates. These are all the templates that you have available to you to use out of the blocks. Um, and this, these starter templates will grow over time as well as we continue updating the card builder. But you can see that you know there's like eight or so templates that I have here. Um, and then it gives you a visual on what some of these templates look like. Uh, I typically use the first or second template. Um, this has five or six fields. It has uh, an assigned to uh, avatar on this as well. And I can just uh, pick and plug in the fields that I want. Um, so if I want to use template one, I'll go back into the app builder and then choose that exact same. Oops. Choose that exact same. Um, card template here. So all I'll do is look up template one, and then I'll select. Okay, and then we'll save here. Um, once you've saved your template, it's going to jump back into your card. The card is where you actually define the fields that you want, right? Now that it's inheriting this template one, now I just have to fill in the, the fields that I want. So We'll click on open in mobile card builder to do that. It's currently inheriting the template 01 template. So now I just fill in the field that I want. Notice that I can't actually fill out any fields here. And this is where a lot of customers get stuck. Um, why is it that I can't fill out fields? Um, if I go back to um, app builder, you'll notice that there's this table field that it's asking for. It doesn't know what fields 
to present you because it doesn't know what table it's, it needs to pull from. So all I have to do is fill in this table for work order task, and then we'll save. And then we'll relaunch the card builder. And then now I can map the fields that I want, okay? Um, also know that this template uh, is very dynamic. Um, I don't have to fill out every single field that it gives me. It just, this is just giving you a template to use. Um, it will only present the values that um, that you give it. So for example, if I skip, I, I think this is asking for like a label and then a value. Um, if I don't want to use this, this, this uh, label here, I can just use a second value and just put in number in the top left. And I think it'll auto, um, it'll auto align itself so that it goes, uh, it's aligned to the left as opposed to the right as well. Um, let's put priority here on the second field. In this third cell, we'll put short description. Um, and then for this, um, let's fill out a label for it. And we'll select state, the label for state, and then we'll select the value for state. I would only recommend, um, you know, adding labels where you think that they are, it makes more sense for the user to understand. So, you know, things like number, you don't really need a label for, but state's a bit more ambiguous. So the label could help. Um, this, it's expecting an image field. So I can fill out fields like uh, assigned to. Assigned to doesn't make sense since all these records will be assigned to me. So we can do things like, uh, we'll use the open by. Um, whoops, we'll go open by and then we'll dot walk into the avatar field. Okay. Um, and then if I only fill out the value, it'll give me some sort of name, right? But we don't know what that name is being associated to. And so we'll fill out the label for opened. That way they know that this person, David, uh, David, um, it's being opened by the David. So we'll add the label and then the value to the right of that. Okay, so we'll save that. And at this point, I now have five or six fields associated to this card. Um, and this first uh, screen, list screen, is now uh, ready to use. So in order to get this list screen to show up on my agent app, I now have to associate it to a launcher screen of some sort, right? I have a few launcher screens here. Um, let's associate it to my primary home screen for my work. I'm going to add it as an icon um, section uh, here in this UI uh, carousel, okay? To do that, we'll go back to mobile app builder, the home screen. Um, this is card builder. Let's go back to the home screen here. Um, and then for screen launchers, you can find it under screens. Uh, I think this screen launcher in particular is called my work. So we'll look up my work. Let me open that up. Um, and then all I do is I'll scroll down on this launcher screen and see launcher sections, right? There's two, um, there's one for task, which is this one here. And then one for my work, which are all the different icons here. So let's add a fifth one. Uh, we'll scroll down on this icon section and add a new screen. Uh, or not add, um, choose new screen. Uh, and then we'll select the one that we just created, which was called critical task assigned to me. Oops. Tasks with an S, okay, assigned to me. And then we'll save. Uh, and with that, if I refresh this by swiping down on the home screen, it should show me my new list screen that I just created. If I open it up, I can see all of my critical tasks here. Okay. So at this point, I have a list screen, but I can't quite tap onto it. I'm currently tap trying to tap, but it's not doing anything. And the reason for that is because I, all I created so far was the um, that first list screen. How do, I, uh, how do I see more details or maybe show the activity screen? 
Um, the next step is you actually need to create a record screen, right? So um, let's go back to the list screen that I created, uh, which we called vertical task. Uh, assigned to me. And then we'll go back into my list item config. Um, if you scroll down on this list item config, right, it contains the card that you just created and define all your fields for. But underneath that, there's also a table called embedded screens. This is where you can um, add your detail screen, activity stream, as well as a related list. Um, so let's create a new embedded screen here. Um, I want a record screen in particular. And then let's go ahead and give this unique naming. Record screen. Um, and then it's going to ask for a card, an icon, and, and so forth. Um, so best practices, if you want the card on your record screen to look different than your um, uh, than this one here, then I would recommend creating uh, a brand new card, right? Um, if you want it to have the same template, then you just inherit that same template. Um, but if you don't care for these fields to look different, or if these fields here are, are fine on both your list screen and your record screen, then you can actually just use the same one, right? So if I just choose that exact same card here, um, critical task assigned to me, and then save. Oh, it's asking for an icon. The icon doesn't matter because it's being associated to the list screen. So we can just select any icon. It doesn't really matter. We'll save that. Um, if I refresh this now, I should be able to tap into that list screen and it'll just show me the exact same card, right? But the benefit of having a record screen is being able to show additional fields underneath it. Um, so once I create that detail screen or activity stream, you'll see uh, more info. Uh, and again, if you want the fields to look different between this screen and that screen, then I would recommend creating a new card, right? So you can have number, short description, and then maybe change some of these other fields here. Um, that's the, Those would be the use cases where you create a new card. Okay. Um, so now that I have my record screen, let's scroll down here and create additional segments. This is where I actually make my record screen useful. Um, we'll create a new record screen segment here. Um, and it's gonna ask for what embedded screen you want. So we'll create new. So here, you know, I can create an activity stream, a detail screen, a related list, uh, maybe even add a, uh, a web screen to it if, if you wanted to, um, lots of possibilities. But the most common use case is that Every list screen will have an activity stream, um, a detail screen if you want additional, additional fields, uh, or a related list. Okay, so let's create an activity stream here. Um, it's going to ask you what features you want on this activity stream. Um, this is pretty default show work notes, additional comments, be able to ta show attachments. Um, and then all I have to do is define what table I want this activity stream to show which is work order task. Uh, and what icon you want. The icon won't show up, so I'll just select whatever, this bookmark, and then we'll save it. Um, so now if I refresh at this point, I should see that record screen with an activity screen. And so now I can do things like add comments, um, work, in progress, right? Um, or if I wanted to take a picture and add that as an attachment, that's totally possible too. Okay. Um, what if I want to show additional fields to this? Maybe show what is the location of this task? I'd be able to do that by going back to my record screen and then creating a new segment for details. <coughs> I'll create a new embedded screen here for details. 
uh, we'll give it unique naming. Select an icon. The icon will show up. So again, I'm going to select a random one here. Um, and then what, what fields do I want to pull from? So which is work order task. Um, and then you can start selecting your screen fields. Uh, let's just show the location field here. And we'll show one additional field or location, and then we'll save. So now I should be able to see that location field show up underneath. Okay. So notice that as soon as you add more than one segment, you'll see that these start to actually display the segments. If you only have one segment, it'll show just that screen. But as soon as you have two or more, you'll then start to see these segments um, uh, show up like this. Okay, so now I can pivot between segments. Um, okay. So that was a very quick example on how you can build a list screen um, using some of the starter templates that Mobile Card Builder um, gives um, out of the box. Uh, in next week's session, we'll show you, I'll show you how to build a template from scratch and then show you some of the best practices on how you can navigate um, some of those configurations. Any questions in the chat before we wrap up for today? Um, there are a couple things I do want to show for resources. Um, if you felt lost at all throughout some of these configurations, uh, don't worry. If you're new to mobile, it does take uh, a couple of visits and some hands-on experience to start familiarizing yourself with some of these uh, navigations and interfaces. Um, but to help with this, um, I think customers have shared with us that there's some resources that might help, um, including our car key deck and video, which you can find on our community site. Um, if you go to community and then go to expert advice, this tab here, there's a little resource called list of essential training. Um, and this article in particular just consolidates all of the relevant content that you might use uh, as you're getting started. There's this one article called Mobile Hierarchy. If you open up this hierarchy deck, um, there's a video associated to it, but there's also a deck as well. Uh, this will show you every table that is related to building like a list screen, which is one of the most common configurations. And it'll show you exactly what a, you know, what is the purpose of a segment? What is a uh, record screen and all the things that make up the record screen? Um, what are the things that I can do with um, each and every table, right? From app config to navigation bar to the screen and launcher screens. Um, it'll give you some sort of visual, what it configures, right? and uh, what you can do with it, as well as description. So if you're new to mobile, um, highly recommend checking this out. Um, if you're looking for deeper knowledge and um, and ramping up with mobile, I also recommend that you check out our Now Learning course. Um, if you simply look up mobile, there is a course called Mobile Introduction. If you open that up, it's going to present with uh, present to you all the courses that are related to mobile. I think there's six courses here, um, but if you register to this, um, this will take you through the terminology and hierarchy, all the features and how to start thinking about some of your mobile configurations. Uh, the courses are free and it even gives you a free developer instance with all the pre-built plugins and demo data so that you can really get started learning. So highly recommend checking that out if you haven't already. Uh, I do see one question from Paul it up. Um, how do I bring item sorting under filter category? I see that you're having this item sorting option. What's missing in my instance? Um, item sorting under filter. Uh, if you're uh, if you're asking specifically about our sorting and filtering uh, feature. Um, Let's see, I might be able to send you a product doc that might help. So if you look up mobile filters for service now on mobile, 
Lone Wolf Sword Team. Um, oh, this is on studio. It's not good. Okay, uh, mobile sorting. So this, so I'm not certain if mobile sorting was quite brought into mobile app builder quite yet. Um, I don't know if it, if the latest app builder has uptaken that, but we do have product talks on how you can take advantage of sorting. Um, that can be done on a platform UI. Uh, and here are the product docs to it. I'm going to add it to the chat. Um, and sorting definitely let us know in our post session survey that this is a topic that you want us to cover. Um, I think this is definitely a great example where we have a gap in some of our documentation. And I would love to cover it, uh, do a deep dive on how you can take advantage of this feature. Um, I think this was a new feature that came in through either San Diego or sometime recently. Um, but hopefully this product doc helps for now. Okay. Any other questions in the meantime? Not seeing any other questions. So uh, we could probably wrap up here. Uh, let me share one last screen. Okay. Um, again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, again, it's great to be back. Uh, have a lot more new topics that I'm excited to share very soon. Um, again, in next week's session, I'll revisit how you can create card templates from scratch and re review some of the best practices around that. Uh, but if there are other topics you want us to visit, uh, feel free to let us know in our post session survey, which will pop up as soon as you close out of this, this Zoom webinar. Um, if you're new to our Academy series, just a reminder that we do upload these onto YouTube, which you can find on our community site. So make sure you subscribe to the forum, um, register to our App Academy series. I want to show that particular article, actually, because um, we did recently migrate to a different article. So let me share with you how you can find the latest App Academy. Um, if you go to community, and then look up Mobile App Academy. Mobile App Academy. Um, it's going to be this, is it this one? I think it's this one. Okay, yeah, this is, so we recently migrated to a new article. Um, definitely make sure that you're registering to this one to get all the latest updates. Okay, you can see that we cover our latest topic here, getting started with the mobile app builder. Okay, with all that said, thank you all for joining today and hope to see you again in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.